Hey, knock it off. Welcome back to Gracie Talks. My name is Gracie. We're going to be doing Twilight today. For people who have been following along, we are making a steady march through all of the major franchises of the 2000s. Twilight is up next. When I first started doing these videos, one of my main questions was, what are the chances that you survive in a world like this? I sort of wanted to try to quantify how dangerous would these worlds actually be? Because they're so romanticized and it's the fantasy of it all, right? But then you think about it, vampires are running around. Would I make it? in that world. It's pretty hard to do with some of these vague ones. I did a breakdown of Hunger Games, what are the chances of surviving in the Hunger Games because I was able to find a complete data set so I could mathematically break it down. I talked about doing the vampire genres next but I wasn't sure how to quantify it and I'm still not, it's pretty difficult. I did find a way to do Vampire Diaries actually. That one will be coming out at some point. And as I started thinking about doing a video about Twilight, I couldn't stop thinking about how much the culture has sort of changed around it where when it first came out, it was such a big deal. Everybody went feral for it. I loved it so much. But then as time went on, people started looking back and being like, was he watching her sleep every night though? And we approach these things with a more mature eye. And I could not get that out of my head when I was doing research for this video and figuring out how I wanted to do it. So I decided let's actually look at what laws Edward broke. I am not trying to put myself in a legal niche. I'm saying this because the last video that I did was about the legal ramifications of the tri Wizard tournament. And I just wanna say, I'm here to do breakdowns about anything really big in pop culture, books, movies, TV shows, any of it. I'm not trying to do the legal niche. That is sort of just where the premise naturally led itself towards with the tri Wizard tournament and then with Twilight because the question of, was that okay is so prominent with Twilight. So we are going to be talking about Twilight, the first movie, breaking that down. And it sort of became a larger discussion piece on who's breaking any sorts of laws slash what laws are the Cullens breaking is more what it turned into. I'll get into it in a second. I should give my disclaimers. I'm not a legal expert. The whole point of all of this is to have a discussion. It's a think piece and then ultimately it's also comedy. If there's one thing about me, you know that I'm here for the yeehaws. I'm also not a Twilight expert, although I was absolutely obsessed with this series when I was younger. In terms of the research for this video, I'm not expecting anyone to know this if you're here and you're watching this, but I just launched this channel. I'm sort of trying to get it up off the ground right now. I have done two long form recaps. That is really what I spent the majority of my time in prepping for the launch of this channel working on. The research that went into those recaps, I truly believe is beyond reproach. I reread everything so many times trying to make sure that I got everything right. With these shorter videos, I'm not doing six months of research for each video. I'm sorry. I'm trying to launch the channel. I'm, I'm grinding. I'm hustling. I'm selling my wares on street corners. Okay. I'm in the trenches right now trying to get this done. In terms of research for these shorter videos, it'll be a couple of weeks. I'll do the research. And I ran into this with the Harry Potter video. I basically just did research on the Triwizard Tournament in and of itself. And then that way I wanted to ask questions that sort of came to mind when looking at it. So that being said, I missed stuff. I'm so sorry to people about that. I'm just including this because for people who actually love the source material, I don't want it to look like I'm not taking this seriously. So I want to tell you right now the research that I did for this one is I watched the first Twilight movie This is only the first Twilight movie. I didn't look at anything past that I'd love to do the rest of the videos But I just rewatched the Twilight movie and then I also had some info up here from when I read it when I was a wee child So you will get some book information, but mainly this is going to be okay I watched the movie Twilight here are my thoughts about it I know this is boring to put all this at the top of the video I just want to be super clear because again I'm building my channel right now overall We are here to support respect people then we're here for the he's and the ha's What I do here is I do breakdowns into books movies and TV that no one asked for it's just the way that my brain works. I am a book nerd who is very anal and likes Excel and likes to talk about things. That's it. Not an expert in anything. Like, comment, subscribe if you're into that. We are going to be going in chronological order through the movie. What laws did ever break in this movie? It more so became what laws did the Cullens break in this movie. But don't get mad because this first one is actually none of those people. It's this random guy, not consensual kiss, harassment. The second legal question this movie raises is one that I do not want to talk about, but it is what we are here to do. The Cullens are introduced in the movie and in the books as being adopted siblings who are all dating each other. The blonde girl, that's Rosalie, and the big dark haired guy, Emmett, they're like a thing. I'm not even sure that's legal. I did research on this. The Cullen family is Carlisle and Esme, are sort of the matriarch and the patriarch. And then you have Edward, who is the main male character for this movie. He is not romantically attached with anybody else in the family. That's a weird sentence. You have Jasper and Alice Cullen, and then you have Rosalie, Hale, and Emmett Cullen. Rosalie and Emmett are together, Jasper and Alice are together. As far as the world knows, this is a family of humans. Carlisle and Esme are the mother and father, and they have adopted all of these kids who now know each other biblically. So I understand why this raised questions. So through that lens, I did look it up. The amount of research that I had to do on the, the FBI man who goes through my search history is judging me hardcore right now. The research that I did, I looked at Washington state law, the movie takes place in Forks. I looked at Washington state law, and I looked at federal law. The research that I did said that if you are adoptive siblings, whether or not you are blood related, if you are adoptive siblings, you are not legally allowed to be married. There are some states where you can marry pretty much anyone. 
including people that you are related to. But in general, in the US, you cannot marry an adoptive sibling, even if you are not blood related. However, I did find out that there are some places where they have a law that if you fill out a form, there's certain information you have to put down and then you have to prove that you are not blood related, you would be allowed to be married. So I don't have a definitive answer on that. And that's as much research as I'm willing to do into that. The Cullens wouldn't actually be married. It's just that they're all dating and they're all posing as adoptive siblings. But I don't know that they would actually be breaking any laws here. It's gross. It's really, really gross. Even with the rule being that they couldn't be legally married, who couldn't be legally married. For Jasper and Alice, Jasper Cullen and Alice Cullen would not be legally allowed to be married. But guess what? Jasper and Alice Cullen are not actually Jasper and Alice Cullen. I mean, those are their names, but they're not actually adoptive siblings because all of their documents would be forged because they're not actually high schoolers. You know, so it's all fake documents. So the people with those fake documents couldn't be married, but they're not actually those people. They're vampires. They're outside of the human law. These fake identities that they have, are they actually legally adopted or is it just sort of a story that they tell people? That's another thing that we just don't know. So while I am not advocating for this, I don't think it's illegal. Could they have picked a story that did not involve them all being a family that knew each other biblically? Yes. Do I wish that they had done that? Mm-hmm. But I don't know what you would take them to court over for this. It's not illegal. It's just weird. Next one, truancy, baby. Edward is just skipping school left, right, and center. The law states that kids between the ages of eight and 18 have to be in school unless they are given a valid excuse by their parents. Edward's parents are probably giving him valid excuses though. Also, technically he's 107. So really that law wouldn't even apply to him. This next one, he gaslights her pretty hard after the accident where he stops the car from crushing her. It's not illegal, but I had to note it because it was egregious. It was textbook. So where we're at in the movie right now, Ella and Bedward know each other. They seem to be drawn to each other. He's trying to push her away and yet keeps pulling her in. She knows that something's different about him, but he won't say what it is. And he's just being a general weirdo. This car almost crushes her. He stops it. That's when she sees, oh, he has supernatural strength. Something is up with this guy. In terms of the actual car accident stopping the car, I don't think he would be liable for the damage he was saving Bella. Hey, knock it off. Next one. Bella and her for the plot friends go to Port Angeles. Edward follows her without her knowledge and consent. Did you follow me? I think this is illegal. In the book, we find out that he was able to follow her because Edward can read everybody's minds, but he is famously not able to read Bella's mind. That's part of what draws him to her. That and the fact that her blood just smells so good that he wants to eat her so badly. Healthy. So the way that he follows her to Port Angeles, he rifles through everybody else's mind because he can hear all of their thoughts. So he's searching for her that way. If you have the ability to read people's minds, would it be illegal to read people's minds? Like if this was something that actually existed in society and people had this ability and it was baked into society now, okay, there are people that can read minds. Is it legal or not to read somebody? I don't think it would be legal to read somebody's mind without their consent. Say la vie, they're operating outside of the law. She is creeped out when she finds out, although that is not necessary to be charged with what I believe he would be charged with. This one was a more clear cut. Yeah, can't do that. Hey, sidebar, I'm glazing over a lot of this because these are fictional characters. There are heavy topics involved in this. I am not making light of those. And there are actually charities in every single video that I post. And one of the charities that I will link in the bio for this video does have to do with some of the more serious topics. Take care of yourselves, love you. Not making light of this. It's just we're keeping it up here because these are fictional characters. Moving on. So I'm adding this to the knock it off bucket. Edward has now confessed that he's a vampire to Bella. We get more of his lore. While this is happening, he's begging her to leave him alone. He's saying that he's gonna hurt her. He's telling her that he's dangerous. Put a pin in that, more on that later. He's trying to convince her that he's dangerous and he does this. As if you could fight me off. And maybe you didn't think anything of it, but I did. Because you can't take a tree down without a permit. That's not allowed. One planet, dude. We have one planet. I verified this, by the way, looking up Washington state law. You absolutely need a permit to take a tree down. Can't just do that. Red flag, he confesses that he wanted to kill her and that he was planning on killing her. And hold on, because I have dormant information coming through. Was it the Twilight story that was told from Edward's POV where we find out that he was actually planning on killing her in the biology class? Can people help me in the comments? Is that real or did I conjure that from somewhere? I looked this up. I don't think that's actually illegal to tell somebody that you were planning on murdering them. If you never actually harmed them in any way, even though you were premeditating a murder, there was no murder to be premeditated. You know, it's not super chill though. As we're getting Edward's lore, we're finding out about how he was changed. Carlisle changed him. Edward was actually the first one that he changed. Carlisle changed him, taking it back to this think piece. What if you lived in a world where vampires were real and that was something that everybody knew about and that was something that society had adjusted for, meaning that there were laws specifically for vampires? I think in that society, it would be illegal to change people without their consent. I do. Look, I'm open to people having other opinions though. 
But then at the same time, Carlisle changed Edward because Edward was dying of influenza. So potentially the Good Samaritan law would come into play. Yeah, he might be fine, actually. Sorry, part of this backstory, Edward was born in 1901 in Chicago, growing up pretty normal life, never had a great relationship with his dad, did have a really good relationship with his mother. He wanted to go fight in World War I. Are we keeping up? It's the early 1900s. Think about what's happening in the world at this time. The only reason why he was hesitant to go off and join the war was because of his mother. He wanted to be there for her. 1918, he is 17 years old. His mother dies of influenza. I think his dad does too. I'm not sure. Do not come for me. Edward almost dies from influenza. Edward's mother begs Carlisle, who was a doctor in Chicago, to save her son no matter what it takes. Wink, wink, do whatever you got to do. Carlisle changes Edward. Zooming out, and here's some insight into what this video was almost going to be. Edward grew up from 1901 to 1918 in Chicago. Think about how different the world was at that time, okay? Stay with me. Women's suffrage, 1920. 19th Amendment gets passed August 27th, 1920, giving women the right to vote. Although it must be said for many women of color, they did not actually get the right to vote until much later. Would Edward have voted for the women's right to vote? Because y'all, I loved this series. Have I covered this, by the way? You cannot make me hate this series. And I loved Edward. I was a Team Edward girl. There is actually more lore about that that I could say, but as of right now, I'm not making any money off this channel. So I'm not gonna give it out for free, but I was a Twilight girl and I loved Edward. As I was watching this movie, but one of the first things that I wanted to do when I said, okay, I should do a video about Twilight. One of the very first things I thought of was, hold on, let's go through Edward's life. Every major event that he would have been alive for, what side of it would he have been on? Hmm? Ultimately, I didn't end up going in that direction, but I couldn't stop thinking about it because y'all, I'm afraid. Think about how he grew up. And he was pretty traditional with Bella, I think. Would he have supported the women's right to vote? On the one hand, the answer is scary. But on the other hand, Carlisle was pretty progressive. And Edward views him like a father. Edward ended up taking a lot of Carlisle's views. So that was what made me feel better. It could have gone either way. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. In terms of where we are in the movie, Edward has given his lore to Bella. He is now taking her home to meet his family. She meets his family. Gorgeous house. They ended up using a different house for pretty much every movie. They're all incredible. But it was a gorgeous house, which reminded me, we all know that the Collins have a lot of money. They're incredibly rich. Now, presumably this is just because they've been alive for so long. They've been amassing wealth this entire time. So I looked into this one. Specifically, how are they making money? This was where I got the information that all of them would have forged documents because Edward has to keep forging documents to re-inherit his own inheritance from himself. So he has wealth, he pretends to be of this age where it would be reasonable for him to pass away. And then he pretends to be a brand new relative of himself and he inherits everything. So they have these forged documents where that's going on, add that to the illegal list. But specifically, how do they make their money? So Edward can read minds and Alice can predict the future, but she can only predict the future if it is what that person is currently on course to do, so it can change. So Alice and Edward kind of hold down the fort in terms of bringing an in income, and they do this by insider trading and predicting where the stock market is gonna go. I mean, it makes sense. Edward can read thoughts, so he would have all of the inside information about, oh, this CEO is about to step down, this is about to happen over at this company. It makes sense that he would have all of that information, but I know y'all are not rocking with insider trading. That is not an issue that you typically see people on either side going, well, I think, and so pretty much everyone is against that, and everyone loved Edward, and I didn't hear anybody talking about this. He is insider trading. For the girlies who care that Cullen house, by the way, it's called the Hoke house. It was a Nike executive, so they also called it the Nike house. They ended up shooting in a different house for the other movies. It sold for $2.5 million in 2022, and it's gorgeous. We are nearing the end here of our was it a crime tally. Bella is now on the run from James, who is a different vampire. He's rolling with a different crew. He's actually rolling with Victoria, if that means anything to you. He's trying to hunt her down, so now all of the Cullens are teaming up to help save her. Bella gets attacked in the ballet studio. It is very cinematic. She is losing blood from being attacked, just being in a fight, and then he also bites her wrist. James does. Now the way that it works in Twilight, because all of the vampire rules are different in all of these franchises, the way that it works in Twilight is the vampire venom, it will turn you into a vampire and it is excruciatingly painful and having a vampire's blood in your system does not heal your wounds the way that it does in the Vampire Diaries universe. So she's losing blood, she has a vampire bite, the venom is going through her, she's in excruciating pain and she's going to bleed out. All of the Cullens are there now, Edward is tending to her, Carlisle tells Edward that the only way to stop the change from happening, if they just let her be, she will be changed into a vampire. He says the only way to stop that from happening happening is if Edward sucks the venom out. So he would have to suck her blood to suck the venom out and then they would have to take her to the hospital to patch the rest of her up. Edward tells Carlisle that he can't do it. Edward had a rebel phase from 1927 to 1931 where he ran away from Carlisle and Esme and he did feed on people. None of the clones feed on people. I didn't cover that because we're not really here to talk about the plot. He only fed on people that were really hardened criminals, people that he thought that he would still be making the world a better place by getting rid of them, but then he still ended up deciding that that was not the answer, that that wasn't right and they all only eat animals now. Bella's blood is so tasty to Edward. Every time he's with Bella, even when he's not in a position where he would have to suck her blood, 
but he's worried about losing control with her a lot of the time. So Edward tells Carlisle, I cannot suck the venom out of her. I'm going to lose control. I'm not going to be able to stop. Carlisle tells Edward, chin up, bud, you can do this. Grab a straw, you're going to be fine. And this one is interesting to me in terms of was it a crime? Because the Good Samaritan Law, as it is colloquially known, is something where each state does it a little bit differently, but by and large, the Good Samaritan Law is if somebody sees somebody who is in need of medical attention and tries to help them, even if they were to make it worse or accidentally injure that person, they're not liable because they were trying to help this person. This does not apply to people who are actually medical providers. Each state is a little bit different, but for the most part, if you're actually a medical provider and you were to injure someone, then you would be liable because you should know better and you would have liability insurance. It's a whole other thing. But if you're just a normie and you're trying to help, you're not going to be held liable unless negligence is found. This is where it gets interesting with Edward sucking the blood out of Bella, because I believe that he didn't think that he was going to be able to stop and he went in. So if he had injured her, is that negligence? But then I thought about it further. If Edward had been alone with Bella, I don't think he would have done it. I think he would have let the change happen and he just would have been sad boy about that. I think he did it because he knew that Carlisle would interfere if Carlisle needed to. So I don't think that he would have been liable for anything. I think he's in the clear with this one. Ultimately, he does suck the venom out. He loses control for a little bit, but then he pulls it back in. They take her to a hospital. She heals. She's fine. The Cullens kill James. And I know what you're asking. Would that have been self-defense? When Edward was the only one who showed up when Bella was being attacked and he's attacking James, that's self-defense. You're fine. But then you have all of the Cullens there. And I think it's reasonable to assume there's no way that James was going to be able to harm people with all of the Cullens sort of holding him back now, at which point he should have been turned in. But there are no vampire police. So... I have some more overall thoughts, but that is the end of the tally of were the Collins committing crimes or not in this. In the end, I thought I was going to find a lot more Edward just straight up committing actual crimes. Didn't find as many as I thought that I would, but I am not saying that Edward and Bella were healthy. Some of my overall thoughts when I was watching it was one, just, God, it feels good to watch this movie again. I will not pretend to hate this movie for the clicks, views, and engagement. I won't do it. I loved this series when I was a kid. And I love going back to stuff and celebrating the nostalgia and the stuff that you liked about it. I think it's cool to like things. When people make things and put time and effort into it, it's cool to like it. It's also okay to say, hey, with a more mature mind, a lot of this I view very differently now. But some of those thoughts that I did jot down. At the very beginning of the movie, Bella moves from Phoenix, Arizona to Forks, Washington. She carries a cactus with her. For all of the beginning scenes in the movie, Bella is just holding this cactus and I never saw it in the movie again. I kept looking for it whenever the movie would show scenes in her bedroom in Forks. The cactus has either died in Forks now or, or look at that, the cactus looks even healthier. Just kind of a bummer, nothing really to say on that. Other thoughts, I love Billy Burke. And then finally talking about revisiting stuff that you used to love. I was watching it, there were definitely scenes that I had to look away or sort of do this kind of motion. But then some of the backstories would come up and I remember how fascinating I thought that all of that was. And it was funny to me because it's just so on brand for me as a person. The scene where Bella is now with all of the Cullens, for the most part, the Cullens are really nice to her, but Rosalie does not like her because girls were not allowed to be friends in early 2000s movies. And she's also rightfully pointing out that they could all get in a lot of danger for running around with a human. And yet, when they're all getting ready to help Bella run, Rosalie's hesitating, and Carlisle looks at her and says, she's family now, and we take care of her family. And I was like, oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why I loved it. And it was always heartwarming to me, because a chosen family trope is going to bring me to my knees every time. So that brings us to the end of this video. I do want to say, for the record, this is not my Twilight video. Most channels that talk about movies will inevitably do a Twilight video where they give their overall reaction to the movie Twilight. I reserve the right to do that at a later point in time and to really dive in, which I want to. If you're here, thank you so much for watching. Go plant a tree. Don't do insider trading. And I will see you next time.